Over the centuries, the world's greatest wordsmiths have crafted the most beautiful sentences ever written. Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Austin. There is no charm equal to tenderness of heart. And Jermaine Pennant. I pulled two birds and I went home, which is nearly a proverb. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Football Book Club Podcast, the podcast where every episode we read another footballer's autobiography. He basically says their incentive to win the World Cup was that Nancy Delio was going to make them some pasta. We read all the classics, Darren Huckabee's Hucks, Frank Lampard's Totally Frank, and of course, The Life and Times of Barry Ferguson. This wasn't something I planned to say, but he's given me real Paddington vibes. And we're often joined in doing so by guests from the world of comedy and football. I believe this book was written near David Ginla. <laughs> I don't believe it was written by David Ginla. So if you like your books less Jane Austen, more Charlie Austen, less Dickens, more Dickov, listen now by searching Football Book Club wherever you get your podcasts. Norbert Stephen Butler, you have pleaded guilty to the charges brought by this court, and it is now my duty to pass sentence. You are an habitual criminal who accepts arrest as an occupational hazard, and presumably accepts imprisonment in the same casual manner, ditto being tased or bonked on the head with a truncheon. We therefore feel constrained to commit you to the most severe punishment allowed for these offences. It gives me no pleasure whatsoever to inform you that it's Crowley time. Crowley time! Hello, and welcome to Crowley time with me, Tom Crowley. With me, Tom Crowley. You know, I love autumn, which it is in the Northern Hemisphere at the time that I'm putting this out. And one thing I love about autumn is how brief it is, especially these days, with America and China fighting harder than ever to finally defeat the Earth's atmosphere in their decades-long war with the planet. Unlikely allies, yes, but their efficiency can't be denied. This might not be backed up by science, and boffins, please do write in if you can prove or disprove what I'm about to say, at gmail.com. but it seems to me that the summers last much longer these days, and the winters appear more quickly. So at this point in the calendar, gravitating around the spooky centrifuge of All Hallows' Eve, autumn winks in and out of existence like a flamenco dancer twirling past a doorway in an orange dress. And just for a few days, it seems, people's evening commutes are accompanied by burning sunsets, evenings are made for blankets and hot chocolate, and everyone makes the big wardrobe swap from hot pants to enormous woolen capes and sexy cat leotards. But after the pretty red sunset comes a long, cold night, and to keep warm, people gather around fireplaces to tell thrilling tales of murder and dismemberment and listen to sketch comedy in the time-honoured tradition. So join me and my special guest, cool dude Marek Larwood, as we warm your cockles and other vulnerable areas with tales of terror, inner peace and juices. So put on your blanket and your sexy cat leotard and let's get to it. Be sure to get Zurich the figures along with a great big sloppy kiss by close of business. Comprendini? Okay, everyone. Good meeting. Back to work. Bum squeezes all round. Yeah. Um... Mr. Frenellum? Yes, Matthew. I I just wonder, could I have a quick word? My words take time, and time is money. But you, Matthew, are welcome to my money. But only metaphorically, in that they are words, not actual money. Great. Except for your salary and any and all bonuses or benefits you may earn while working here. Uh, Of course. That is money you are entitled to, but other than that, the only money you'll be getting out of me takes the form of time in which words are spoken. Thank you. So, write me a cheque. What? Talk to me. Oh, Well, I just wanted to talk about the meeting just now. Yes, excellent meeting. Excellent. Decisive. Strident. Yes. Only there was one, well, a a, a few times. Come on, come on. Order the bill, man. See, there we go again. Sometimes when I'm trying to contribute to a conversation, a meeting like that, you um, you undermine me. That is a serious comment, Matthew. And I'm a serious man. Look... I'm sorry, but we were right in the middle of the call with Zurich in there, and I suggested creating a more clear division between sales's work and marketing's work, and you said, no, that's a terrible idea. Did I? Did I now? Probably because it is. See, this is the problem, because I don't don't want to argue in a group situation like that, and I, I don't feel able to raise the issue with you otherwise. Why on earth not, man? My door is always open. Well, the idea of coming to a superior with a complaint just 
It makes me feel a bit, uh, uh, well, anxious. Oh, right. I see. I'm so sorry, Matthew. I didn't realise you had an anxiety disorder. What? Uh, 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 no, no. You know, the company has a counsellor on staff. Are you adequately medicated? No, 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 no. I don't have an anxiety disorder. I just... Yeah. I, I just feel a bit nervous. Not like I have some sort of chronic disorder. Just, you know, just a nor Well, you know, an average amount. Right. I see. So, what's the problem? I really do love this place, and uh, I'm happy in my work. Delighted to hear it, Matthew. Goodbye. No, 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 wait. No, I'm generally happy, and in general... I feel supported by the team, but when you undermine me like that, I feel a bit abandoned. Right, right, I see you suffer from abandonment issues, probably from childhood. Did one of your parents leave home, or a guardian? No, 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 no that's not it. Listen, you remember the monthly check-in last week? You said that my idea for appointing into the departmental liaisons was moronic. I said that, really? Hmm... Probably because it was. That really messed me up, to be honest. It was all I could think about all day. And when I got home, I couldn't even eat my dinner. An eating disorder. No! You know, often those are just a symptom of trying to exert greater control over your life when you feel powerless. You're not listening. Or peer pressure. Are the other boys commenting on your weight? Is this why you didn't touch the pastries in that Zurich meeting just now? I don't have an eating disorder. It's starting to sound like you do. I don't. I'm just saying. It's a bit depressing when... Depression. Oh, God. Very serious stuff. You can't just ignore that sort of thing, Matthew. I'm not the one ignoring anything. We'll definitely need to get you on a course of something, and we'll see if the company can't sort out a doctor's appointment, get you an official diagnosis. No, Mr. Frenellum. I don't have chronic depression or abandonment issues or an eating disorder. You don't? No. I'm just sometimes made sad, not chronically and within normal psychological parameters, by the things you do in the workplace. And with respect, those feelings can't be medicated or explained away. You're right, Matthew. People do have feelings, and those feelings can be hurt in perfectly mundane ways. Ways that don't relate to a medically diagnosed chemical imbalance or a past trauma or a chronic condition. Yes, thank you. Yes, they can. It just happens that those are the ones I'm not legally obliged to care about. Catch you on the flip side, sad boy. I think I've got depression now. Gosh, the dynamics of the office environment sound terribly difficult. Here in the studio, the only political issue I face is working out who's going to make the tea. And it's always me. Because <laughs> I'm the only one here. <laughs> uh, let's see if anyone's called. Hello, this is Crowley time with me, Tom Crowley with me, Tom Crowley. We can't take your call at the moment. Please leave your message after the tone. Yes, hello. I was hoping to speak to someone about what you're supposed to do when someone says that you're boring. That does happen to me sometimes, and the idea of being a boring person does trouble me. What should I do about this? Normally when this happens, I remind the person in question about one of the most interesting cases ever to pass through the local civil courts in the borough of Hampshire. Now the case that I'm remembering is... I'm very sorry. I appear to have spontaneously fallen asleep there. That does happen sometimes. Now, the case that I was thinking of was one of the most interesting ever to pass through the local civil courts of the borough of Hampshire. Not the most interesting case. That was a different case. This... Uh, oh, sorry, listeners, I must have nodded off there for a moment. What was I saying? Oh, never mind. Let's see what's on telly.
Welcome back to AM in the morning. I'm Andy and I'm Mandy. Before the break, we saw the highlights from Primark's new autumn women's wear collection. Like a bomb went off in a zoo. And before that, we saw adverts for nine different types of face cream, 50 p's worth of toothpaste in a 90 pound jar. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, Andy, but it has been a bit quiet in the studio lately, hasn't it? That's right, Mandy. At last, I can hear myself think. And you and the viewers may have guessed that that's because we haven't been graced with the presence of our rather lively resident chef, Marco Deponi, for a while. No, indeed not. And that's also why I haven't found any pornographic photo collages of my wife and I left for me in my dressing room. But the world did recently hear from Marco in a rather surprising video uploaded to social media, wherein Marco shared some travel tips from a recent visit to his homeland. Let's remind ourselves of that clip. Marco De Pony's Guide to Rome. It's very important to have a hotel room with a good view. From this one, I can see my cousin. Hey, Bruno, you're a fat pig. Oh, Marco. The clip sees Marco sharing his visit to the Trevi Fountain. Don't drink the water. My uncle grew an extra finger. The Colosseum. Yeah, I never liked this place. It's too big. And several personal anecdotes from his past experiences of the city. That guy sells me coke sometimes. This guy sells me coke sometimes. This guy refuses to sell me coke. For fans of local history, this is where I first see a girl's bra. First place I put someone's finger in my mouth. First place I have sex. He also stops in at the Vatican. Hey, where is this guy? Bring out the Papa! Bring out the Papa! Don't shush me, you fucking... The absolutely stunning gardens of the Vatican. I tell you, those Catholics, they are really good at gardening and keeping their mouths shut. Before finishing his day with some of Rome's finest dining. Now, this is my most essential order from any restaurant when you are visiting Roma. More wine! More wine. Uh, uh. Not forgetting to swing by the Piazza Venezia to pay his respects to the monument of Victor Emmanuel II, the first king of the unified Italy. It's the end of the night and I'm back fucking here again. Hey, you come off your horse and come get me, you bastard. You think you're so fucking big. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly knows how to make the most of a city break, doesn't he? You can say that again. But unfortunately, that is the last that anyone has seen of Marco De Pony in several weeks. As we know all too well, not seeing Marco for a few days is perfectly normal, even if that involves missing professional commitments, family occasions and elective surgeries. But police became concerned when Marco failed to turn up to his regular weekly appointment at the London Eye, where he habitually rides one full rotation of the wheel fully naked. Since then, a major international manhunt has begun, a joint effort between Scotland Yard, Interpol and NATO to find Marco. While he hasn't got any specific criminal charges being brought against him, besides his hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of unpaid road fines, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has commented, I just don't like the idea of not knowing where he is. Joining us now down the line is Interpol agent Darren Lipschitz, who is liaising with Scotland Yard on this search. Darren, hello. Hello there. First and foremost, Darren, can I just say that I was recently very interested to find out that Interpol is not short for International Police, as I had thought, but actually Interdependent Polyamory. Yes, that's a common misconception. I was just talking to my wives about it the other day. Yeah, gotta miss him. But you are also an international police presence. Well, that's right. The agency was originally set up to advocate for people in interdependent polyamorous relationships, but the advocacy sort of expanded to cover, you know, broader remit of collaboration between police forces in different countries. You can see where the confusion over the name comes from, then. Not really. So, Darren, where is Marco De Pony right now? Well, that's a question we're all asking. And at the moment, all I can tell you for definite is that he's not in his flat, which we're surveying around the clock, and he's not in the studio. He's not, is he? No, not as far as we know. Damn, that would have been a real coup. Have you had any other leads? Yeah, quite a few. In fact, um, just yesterday, a woman in Tibet reported seeing a strange, dirty, unshaven man screaming the recipe for a risotto al milanese at this confused crowd. But, uh... Just turned out to be some mental. So frustrating. What steps are you taking to find Marco? 
we've got plain clothes officers keeping an eye on all major airports, you know, ferry ports and uh, soap opera award parties. We've distributed his photograph to every off-licence and upstairs massage parlour from here to Marrakesh. And we told Tamsin Althwaite to keep an eye out on all. He does like Tamsin. Yes. Sadly, she tells us she hasn't seen him since she maced him at the BAFTAs. Very tricky. But what can we do to help? Well, Andy, uh, the most important thing is that you and your viewers stay alert. You know, Keep an eye out for Marco. Also, traces of Marco. Have you noticed an unusually large number of empty Bailey's bottles discarded in your local public spaces or waste ground? Has there been an increase in local noise and public indecency complaints? Can you smell oregano? If everyone watching this keeps these questions in mind, we should be able to zero in on the pony before long. If Marco's out there somewhere watching this now, what would you say to him? Marco, if you're out there, I implore you, your friends and your family, if you have one, are worried. They just want you home. So please hand yourself in at the nearest police station or government building so we can get you home safe and sound. Because if you don't, I will hunt you down and kill you myself. Sounds fair enough to me. Thank you, Darren Lipschitz. Pleasure. Love the show. Later in the show, we'll be speaking to Scarlett Moffat, who'll be telling us about her theory that Marco may have transformed into some sort of reptilian chameleon creature and blended in with his furniture. An absolute disgrace. After this ad break, I hope you like face cream. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. You idiots! Don't you see? Marco's telling us exactly where he is in his video! I figured it all out! At the Trevi Fountain, he says his uncle grew an extra finger. That's a total of 11 fingers. He says a tour guide refused to sell him cocaine. He says the Colosseum is too big. Uncle 11, 11 in Italian is undici, un undici, double negative, dici. A tour guide wouldn't sell him cocaine so he couldn't get high, therefore low, guide low. The Colosseum is too big. It's colossal. The Latin for small is parvo. He wants a parvoceum. Dici, guide low, parvoceum. A ditch, guiding you low, par, equal to a seum. A low ditch equals you see him. Isn't it obvious? He's turned into a reptilian chameleon creature, you fools! Well, it sounds like all sorts of helpful theories are circulating, but wherever Marco is, let's just hope he's okay. If you'd like to see Marco's full Guide to Rome video, you can find it shared to my various social media platforms or to my YouTube channel, all at a Tom Crowley. Be safe, Marco, and whatever you do, please, please, don't steal any more computers from children's hospitals. People get very upset about that sort of thing. And speaking of contacting people, I reckon it must just about be time for us to pop into the sorting room to see if we've had any nice letters in from you lovely listeners. My faithful postmaster Savaloy should have it all sorted for me. Now I've just got to let myself in with the scanner here. (coughs) Calf print confirmed. Oh, there certainly is a cosy autumnal atmosphere in here, Savaloy. Glad you noticed, sir. Did you get some potpourri or bake some fresh muffins or something? Oh, no. I had pumpkin pie for lunch and I've just let one off. But... what... But you just... Why would you be glad I noticed? Oh, never mind. Look, just well done, I suppose. Thanks very much. Do you like autumn, Savaloy? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Except for that one really scary night where everything's absolutely terrifying. Ah, yes. Guy Fawkes Night. Yeah. What? Guy Fawkes Night? Why? I'm passionately opposed to capital punishment. Oh. So I find the celebration of the torture and murder of an incarcerated person very troubling and not a little frightening, if I may say so, sir. Yes, I understand. And Halloween? Bloody love it. Good. I forget how socially conscious you can be, Savaloy. They used to call me Red Savaloy down at the depot. (laughs) Ah, very funny. And appropriate. Why? Because of the sausage. The what? Well, the... Look, let's not get bogged down, can we? Have we had any letters? Just the two, sir. Let me bring them up on the video wall. First one's from Colin Arnott again. Ah, Colin Arnott, our most loyal and consistent correspondent. God bless him. Is it an insanely long one? I'd call it manageable, sir. Excellent. Thanks, Colin. 
Tom, I can already see you wincing as you open this. What has my stalkery northern idiot sent me now, I hear you say? I didn't think that, Colin. I'd forgotten you were northern. As well you know, I feel obliged to reply when you ask your wonderful listeners for feedback on what they like or don't like about Crowley time. I worry that you'll be sitting in the basement of Crowley Towers with young Mr. Savaloy looking at an empty mailbag rummaging around its hessian folds for a reply. Uh, sorry to say, Colin, but uh, Savaloy doesn't appreciate people talking about his hessian folds. Do right, mind your own blooming business, I say. I was going to try to be clever and come up with an amazing HMS Pinafore or Tom Lehrer style ditty about the content of the show that I liked, kind of along these lines. There's Master Chris Marco Savaloy and great guests make the show a hit. The answer phone hot swassages, young wingnut and the odd sweary bit. Sir Juntley Buffingham is fun, Spanks McCandle, wink, will give you one. Tom Crowley writes and performs it all and somehow manages not to be shit Will you get the idea. However, to come up with this sort of genius guff, I was checking your website to find out how to spell Chuntley Buffingham, just as it sounds, Colin. And there, at the back, behind the recycling bins, was the news section of your website. I was familiar with your roles in wooden overcoats and Victoriosity, but hold on, what the actual flip? You were in the brilliant and very discomforting Eliza and the harrowing. I would have thought you would need a platform like the letters section on your show to soundly broadcast your wares. As always, Tom, you're welcome, Colin Arnott. Well, your welcomes are in order, Colin, because I would indeed like to thank you for that comprehensive highlights reel. Fans of Crowley Completism might like to know that as well as all the shows Colin mentions there, you can also hear me in children's sci-fi drama The Res Season 2, bovine comedy powerhouse The Beef and Dairy Network podcast, anthology comedy horror extravaganza Ramon Fears Terror Tapes, and as various background Romans in historical political comedy thriller Cry Havoc Ask Questions Later. What's more, at this year's recent British Podcast Awards, three of these shows mentioned were represented. Wooden Overcoats, The Res, and Eliza were all nominated, and Overcoats even won the GOLD for Best Fiction Podcast. So I think we can all tell what the real subtext is here. Hire Tom Crowley and receive wealth and fame and the respect of your peers. Thanks for providing me with this excuse to spread that message, Colin. And thanks for the song, too. Now, what's next? One from someone new, sir. Hmm, how exciting. Let's see... This one comes in from Sefi Poulter. Dear Tom, there was a time when I harboured dreams of winning a copy of Discount Bin. That being this show's soundtrack album, the prize for the best letter in each episode, just for the new listeners. However, hearing Trovi Buckshe's rendition of Living in a Box changed my whole outlook. I now not only no longer want Discount Bin, I've also got rid of all the other music I owned, having realised that nothing would ever measure up to the masterpiece I had just heard. I've now given up my job and intend to roam the earth wearing a hat and knapsack fashioned out of cardboard boxes, leading a merry band consisting of my friends, family and dentist, singing Living in a Box all the way and asking bystanders if they've heard the good news about Trovi. I assume I can count on your blessing. Kind regards, Sefi. Uh, Sefi there is referring to a moment in the last episode, number 28. I'm glad that Trovi's musical genius has moved you so profoundly, but you leave me on the horns of a dilemma, Sefi. You see, concealed behind a layer of irony, I detect in your email the hidden message that you actually do want to win a copy of Discount Bin, and that this is all a clever trick designed to catch a free album out of me, and I don't want to reward that kind of deceit. But, on the other hand, Colin Onnett has already won before, so I have no choice but to award you... Letter of the Episode! And, as you clearly already know, this means that your free copy of the album will be winging its way to you soon. You win this time, Poulter. Thanks to everyone who wrote in, and to everyone who's done a nice post about this show on social media, or who wrote a nice review on their podcast platform of choice. It all helps, and it all encourages me to keep making this show building this vast egomaniacal monument that I love so dearly, even as it consumes me. If you'd like to comment on my monument, then simply email crowleytimepodcast at gmail.com. That's crowleytimepodcast at gmail.com, Earthman. And you could be Letter of the Episode! Right, now, Savaloy, let's... Oh, Savaloy. You've changed. That's right, sir. You appear to be dressed as an upsettingly accurate facsimile of Guy Fawkes' corpse. That's right, sir. I'm going to tour the bonfires of Britain distressing the little children. It's an awareness campaign for Amnesty International. And I'm sure it'll be a very popular one. How do you make all the blood come out? There's a little bladder hidden up my sleeve, sir. Look. Oh, lovely. 
Well, I think it's long about time that we close up the... Not so fast, baby! Ha! Oh, Mr. Christmas. What are you doing here? It's not even Halloween yet. And don't I know it. We're right in the throes of production up there in the North Pole. I can't move for little bastard toy trains and yo-yos and official Crowley time merchandise, of course. And that's what I'm here about. Oh, of course. You want to tell all the good little girls and boys that Crowley time t-shirts and sweatshirts are available at CrowleyTime.com and there's still time to order them in time for Christmas. That's right. And of course, digital copies of the Crowley Time soundtrack album Discount Bin also available at CrowleyTime.com. Surely the digital copies don't take up space in the workshop, do they? Au contraire, Tom. Au contraire? What? I don't know. It just sounds funny when you say it. Don't mess me about, all right, Sonny Jim? No, no, I wasn't. Just remember, you mess with Christmas, you get the holly, okay? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Good. You see, Tom, the way digital album downloads are made is this. For every digital copy, we burn a CD album, put the CD in a jewel case, print off liner notes and cover art, slide them into the case, and seal the whole thing in gossamer-thin single-use plastic wrapping. Then we unwrap it, put the CD in the computer, and rip the MP3 tracks off it, ready to upload for whomsoever would like to buy it. My God, that sounds horrifically wasteful. Yes, it's something to do with licensing agreements that haven't been changed since the 1990s. I, I don't really understand it. So as you can imagine, I'm buried up to my ass crack in copies of Discount Bin. Well, I'm sure the listeners will want to share some Crowley time joy with their loved ones, whether it's in MP3 or high-quality wearable merchandise form available from CrowleyTime.com. Bloody hope so. The place is stacked to the rafters. The gear's blocking the door to the gents. I've been having to use the outside bog. And it's brass monkeys in there. Uh, I can imagine. Anyway, thanks for helping me shift all the crap, Tom. Pleasure, as always. I wish there was something I could do in return. Oh, I know. I'll take your guy outside and light him up for you. Oh, um... What? Uh, what? Uh, oh. Gosh, it's lifelike, isn't it? Off we go, you cheeky Catholic. No, no, I'm bum, not. Bum, oh, you bum, silly monster, bum, put me down. Oi. No, 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 oh, that's oh, not. Oh, Mr. Christmas. Oh, Mr. Christmas. Oh, dear, I better go and rescue Savaloy before he becomes a hot dog. Sorry, listeners, you'll have to excuse me. Meanwhile, let's play an advert. Does the weight of the world feel too heavy some days? Do you find it hard to shut out those stressful thoughts about all the people you're letting down? Do you sometimes feel insignificant and unworthy of happiness? If not, count me incredibly fucking impressed, you mediocre dog dick. Hi, it's me, Mike Shinbone from Shinbone Entrepreneurials, and I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, hey, Mike, whatever this new product is, I hope it's not some goddamn piece of technology, given how these days nobody can scratch their ass without having to get out their smartphone to find directions to where their ass is, or log the ass scratching session on their fucking workout app, or record a TikTok about how goddamn funny it is how people scratch their asses different in different parts of the world or some infantile bullshit. Well, too bad, asshole, because this is, in fact, a new technological advancement from Shinbone Entrepreneurials, which we like to call Bone Help. You see, these days, therapy costs more than a hand job from an elected congressman, but that don't mean the world got any less shitty or people felt any less awful. So, following the basic principle of modern commerce, that everything valuable in the world can be crappily approximated via a digital subscription service, patreon.com forward slash Crowley time. I've assembled a product that offers something that resembles the base components of therapy, but which I am reliably informed I am not legally allowed to call therapy. Yes, it's my new therapeutic support toy, Bone Help. You know that feeling when you get home from a long day at work dealing with total fucking dick handles who wouldn't know a quality Chanel handbag from a pig's asshole on the sunniest day of summertime. Fucking snobs. Just because they're a little wet, that don't make them any less Chanel. Fuck me. Then you get home and, oh good, it looks like the shithead from the local residents association chose this moment to come by and ask why you have a huge shipping container on your front lawn and whether you have a municipal permit to store it there. And of course you tell him you've got diplomatic immunity and to mind his own business and slam the door in his face. 
but somehow that just doesn't do it for you, and the burning rage that some jumped up little asshole would come to your house that your mother paid for with 30 hard years of squatting and tell you whether you can or can't have a 20 foot shipping container on your own front lawn and some of your neighbors, and that rage just burns and burns away, and you know you won't be able to stop it until you smash your head into a wall or drink a quart of vodka or go after that little punk and do something to really rectify the situation. <sighs> well, that's when Bone Help can help you. Simply open the app and try one of our many pre-recorded mindfulness lessons. Okay. Just sit down. It's okay. They don't know you. They don't know what you're capable of. They can't tell you what to do with your life. You got it, man. You're in control. Hey, I'm talking to you. Don't disrespect me. I ain't just say this shit for my health. You hear me? Take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. Calm the fuck down. Calm down! And if that don't do the trick, ratchet things up to the next level and try a full-blown meditative visualization exercise. Oh. Oh, fuck. No way. Everything's so fucking, fucking relaxing and calm. Clear your thoughts. Empty your head. Know what I mean? Shouldn't be too fucking difficult for someone like you. Hey, wow! What's that over there? It's a little fucking fuzzy duckling just floating around. Look at that fuzzy little motherfucker just bobbing on a wave. Maybe dipping down to eat some little piece of kelp or whatever. Is that guy mad? No. He's just a fucking duck. Shit. Maybe you could be a duck too. No, I ain't fucking know what that means either. Just fucking calm down, basically, is what it is. Look, don't get shitty with me. Fucking calm down. Calm down. And sometimes life just gets too much, and you gotta work out that frustration somehow. And that's why the Bone Help app comes fully loaded with a stress-relieving game, proven to reduce intrusive negative thoughts and lower anger levels. A pirated copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas I threw in there. Yeah, that's right, motherfucker. How'd you like that shit? Yeah, you wanna know where your arms and legs are? They're probably fucking halfway to the fucking moon right now, dipshit. Die! Fucking die! Fucking smart-ass President's Association asshole! Boom! God damn, that feels good! Couple hours of that ought to cure what ails you. But Bone Help isn't just for relieving work stress and anger management problems. It's a multifaceted therapy adjacent resource which also offers support for new parents. Oof, that's pretty tough, huh? Boy, I don't envy you. Where, where, where? My God, that has to get old fast. I don't blame you, seriously. I'd feel like crap too. That's why I never had any of the goddamn things. I get it, though. It must suck. Like, having a self-important little residence association rep living in your house 24-7. Just like every second, where you shouldn't have that shipping container there. Where you need a permit for that. Where, why did I come home to find my wife's car burned out today? God, fucking kill me. Also, bereavement. Oh, boo, fucking who? It's not like you got any real problems, like 400,000 unsellable water-damaged handbags in a huge immovable shipping container on your front lawn, or the Port Authority calling you to ask where the huge immovable shipping container came from, or a distinctive tie-pin that was found suspiciously close to a recently torched car that the cops keep coming around to ask questions about. Look, whoever this dead guy is, he was probably an asshole anyway, right? So don't worry about it. End of story. Calm down! And self acceptance Acceptance. Listen, you tried your best, huh? And your best, well, it was crap. It didn't make the grade. And while it's tempting to go into the garage and stick a screwdriver in a can of compressed CO2 and suck it down deep, you don't want to go and do nothing like that, no matter how many problems it would solve. I don't know what kind of mistakes you made, 
Maybe a pal Spooder came up to you with a simple proposal involving a discreet cash payment and a 20-foot shipping container, and you went along with it because it seemed like a pretty good deal. You didn't know that the shipping container wasn't watertight and that the authentic Chanel handbags inside would be water-damaged beyond all recognition. You also didn't know that Chanel isn't supposed to have two ends in it, but that's okay. It's all okay. Because some people in life were just born to be losers. And one of them is you. And that's just how it is. You're a fucking loser. You're always gonna be a fucking loser. But remember, it could be worse. You could be a rat-faced little local residence association creep with a fucked up car. <laughs> God damn, was that ever fucking worth it. Holy shit. Boy, with this little app, soon everybody's gonna be so fucking well-adjusted, I'll be out of business. And won't that make for a fucking change? Won't that be a refreshing fucking new experience? Jesus Christ, I'm crying. I'm fucking crying in the middle of the fucking ad. Fuck me. <laughs> so download Bone Help on your phone or your tablet or your fucking remote control dildo drone or whatever the fuck you got and sign up for a subscription today. The first month is only $5. And to reward long-term subscribers, the cost merely doubles every successive month. Wow, what a deal! So embrace happiness the Mike Shinbone way and download Bone Help today. After all, it can't get any worse. It... What the hell? It smells like burning. Oh no. Oh no, oh god no! Oh no, the merchandise! What the fuck happened? <laughs> you! You residence association yeah, son of a like bitch! It. I'll look kill look you! Like you son yeah. of a bitch! I'll kill you with a fucking brick! Yeah, Just as soon as I finish this ad read! Oh. Bone help available now. Bone help is not endorsed by the American Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, or Rockstar Games Incorporated. Bone help should not be used by anybody suffering from cardiac conditions, epilepsy, or unexpected pregnancy. Bone help is not compatible with Apple iPhone, Samsung Galaxy, or Love Honey Aeropork Dill Drone products. Bone help is classed as a satirical entertainment product and therefore cannot be prosecuted under local or federal medical malpractice or copyright infringement laws. Bone help is eligible for the 2024 Webby Awards. Submit your nomination today at webbyawards.com. Bone help is trademarked and copyrighted. Mike Shin, Bono Shin, Bone Entrepreneurials, all rights reserved. Bone help live happy okay you motherfucking son of a bitch get back here and get ready to eat this fucking brick have you tried to protest in the strongest terms about the language you use it's rubbing off on the young people who listen to your so-called comedy program well, well the other day my youngest hydrangea she called me an nincompoop and i nearly spat out my gaviscon gosh i'm very sorry to hear that while, of course, I expect all responsible parents to exercise caution when deciding whether to let their children experience Crowley time, I hate the thought that that sort of hardcore filth might be spread to the nation's youth through this program. Consider me chastened as fuck. Well, listeners, the good news is that I managed to stop Mr. Christmas before he set Savaloy alight. It wasn't easy, though. When he sets his mind to starting a fire, he's hard to dissuade. I suggested that he could kindle the flame of Christmas joy in the hearts of children everywhere. And he told me to stick it up my figgy pudding and lit a bin on fire instead. It stank. Anyway, time to take my mind off all that. Now, even as you listen to me, I'm going to pop on a favourite podcast of my own. You see, one of my favourite things to do on these crisp autumnal days is to wrap up warm and go out for a nice long walk. And I've been listening to this brilliant show all about walking, rambling, gamboling, well, the whole ambulatory shebang. Have a listen with me. It's brilliant. Massive Walkers Good walk to you listeners and welcome to another episode of Massive Walkers It's the podcast all about stepping outside, exploring England's beautiful countryside and getting some proper nasty blisters in your feet <laughs> I'm your host, Vince Farago and this week I've got some very exciting news for you loyal listeners of the podcast We've got a brand new sponsor Eco Nature Ganic, the all natural drinks company. <laughs> and their lovely representative Ricardo got in touch and he said, um, Kia Vince, we love your cool walking expeditions, like, because um, <laughs> he's a Geordie. <laughs> and we love your fun presenting style and that and your sexy voice. 
<laughs> we didn't actually say that bit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they carried on. Um, and we think that your love of nature and the outdoors and that would pair beautifully with our all eco organic new smoothie. And I said, free smoothies? Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> and, um, and, and money, I, I want some money, so I, I will be needing some money as well, definitely. So, cut to a few weeks later, Eco Nutriganic sent me a big case of the new Fruits of the Earth smoothie, and that, that is delicious. <laughs> In fact, uh, I've never quite tasted anything like it before. There's uh, notes of berries, sort of rhubarb taste, and a real tang of almost truffly savouriness. And there's something tart I, I just can't quite put my finger on. <laughs> And the label says, it's 100% organic ingredients. More organic ingredients than any other brand, it says. It's organic gasmic. <laughs> you know, I'm really excited to have Eco Organic as a sponsor, but I'm even more excited about today's episode. <laughs> You see, what Eco Naturogenic don't know is that since we're sponsorship partners now, for my next rural expedition, I've snuck onto their own farmland to test their 100% organic claims. And they don't know anything about it. <laughs> that is it's pretty sneaky, right, Walkers? Uh-huh. Now, I've found a gap in the barbed wire perimeter fence. I've avoided all the security cameras so far. And if I'm not mistaken, just around these trees... Yes, there's the main juicing building, and in that shed, <laughs> yeah, I can see it, there's the fruits of the earth barrel. Amazing. We get to see the product get made right in front of our eyes. I can see a couple of people in eco natural jumpsuits. Yes, that one's working the juicer. Yeah, but now he's, he's just, um, what's he doing? He's just sweeping old cigarette ends and, um, what's it? Yeah, use Johnny's off the ground outside the shed. I must be doing a bit of cleaning up. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> For a moment that I thought he was going to put it in the um in the in the, in the juicer. I can't believe it. They can't. They can't have their employees dropping any old thing into the juicer. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to speak to someone here. <laughs> Hang on. Now there's, there's a sheep. They've got a sheep and. They're leading it on a rope. I mean, what? Why are they? No, 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 they're not going to. Uh... Oh God! Uh, um, what's going on around here? No, no, what's the? What's the? No, no, they wouldn't. Do... Well, uh, I, I suppose it's still organic. No, this, this can't. Oh, I can't. Please. Oh, please, no, please, oh thank God, me. here's Ricardo. R- please, Ricardo's come oh, no, home, please, he's no, nice. Please, He'll no, put a stop to all this. I won't but. tell anyone, I promise. No, please. What are you doing? What Ricardo, doing? no. 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 Oh, 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 I can't believe what I'm seeing. Uh, Walkers, it's... Uh, Oi, you're not supposed to be here. Uh, 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 just out uh, for um, a little, little walk. So, you want to see how we make the juice, do you? <laughs> Juice? What juice? No, 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 no. I don't even know what juice is. Goodbye. Oh, you'll get a look at the juice, mate. We'll show you how we make the juice. Close up. Oh, please, please, stop. No, 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 I don't do anything. No, please, please, save it. I just, I just want some money. Massive Walkers. This podcast is sponsored by Eco Naturganic, the juices with more organic ingredients than any other brand. Far more. It's always the same, isn't it? You find a great new show, catch all the way up with it, and right at that moment, it turns out the host has got put into a blender. <sighs> oh well, I'll have to work out how to go out for walks all on my own. Or will I? Maybe I could consult my special guest for this episode instead, that being, of course, the great Marek Larwood. Marek, thank you so much for joining me. I just want the money for doing it, please. Did you have a favourite moment from this episode? I just, I just want the money, please. Give me the money that you promised me. <laughs> Very funny. Marek is known for an extensive resume of television appearances, most recently as a regular fixture on ITV2's Celebability. But his true passion is his pet project, The Cool Dudes Walking Club. 
bringing together Marek's enthusiasm for walking, local history, music, painting, and merchandising, the Cool Dudes Walking Club is one of my favorite YouTube channels ever. Do a Bing search on YouTube for Cool Dudes Walking Club and you might notice that the most recent upload just happens to be a walk through Gravesend in Kent with none other than a certain young man who bears a striking resemblance to 1970s ivory tinkling satirist Richard Stilgo, as the comments are so keen to point out, named Tom Crowley. Yes, that's right. I lived my dream and got to go on a Cool Dudes Walk with Marek and the walk was deeply disappointing, but the banter was sizzling hot. Go check out the Gravesend video on the Cool Dudes Walking Club YouTube channel, then scroll back and watch some other picturesque, funny, and incredibly silly walking adventures. You could even join the club to support him. Then why not check out Marek's other channel, simply called Marek Larwood, for some brilliant sketches and vlogs and misguided attempts to go viral. You won't regret it. And while you're rummaging around through the information super junkyard, why not go to CrowleyTime.com and see if you'd like to buy a loved one a t-shirt, sweatshirt or soundtrack album as a present. There's still time to order them for the Masked Chris in December, but you might not want to leave it too late, depending on where in the world you're hoping to have the clobber sent. As well as delighting a fellow Crowley pal, you'll also be supporting this show. And speaking of supporting the show, thanks to the many new Patreon supporters I've picked up since the last episode. I'm overwhelmed at how many people have decided to put their money where their ears are recently, and I'm very grateful. I promise to take all that good feeling you've inspired and immediately monetize it by putting it back into the show. Your reward for your generosity this time around is a bonus bone help meditation exercise from Mike Shinbone himself. To get it, check the supporter-exclusive Bonus Time podcast feed or go to patreon.com forward slash Crowley Time. If you've yet to sign up as a supporter but you're starting to kind of like the idea, you should go there too, patreon.com forward slash Crowley Time and sign up to support this show with $2 per episode or local currency equivalent. And hurry, Daddy needs his shiny, shiny coin. The next episode will be released when the snarky, self-referential, sexually explicit Hollywood reboot of Bill and Ben the Flowerpot Men is greenlit. So make sure to subscribe, so you'll be alerted at the precise moment that happens. Everything you've just heard was made by me, Tom Crowley, and featured special guest performer Marek Larwood. The organ music was performed by Kathleen Thiessen. Please submit all praise, questions, or complaints to at a Tom Crowley on social media or email CrowleyTimePodcast at gmail.com. To help me pay off my fines for seasonal mascot-related bin incineration, go to patreon.com forward slash CrowleyTime and become a supporter today. Or go to CrowleyTime.com and buy some of the show's merchandise or its soundtrack album. And remember, when there was only one set of footprints in the sand... That was when I carried you. When there was one set of footprints and a long sort of trench beside them, that was when I got tired and dragged you up the beach. I'm sorry, but it's hard to carry people, and it was a long way. Bom pa pom pa pom pom Bom pa pa Frenelum here Yes Yes Matthew he works for me No When Oh that's terrible Horrible How did it happen Wrecking ball Yes that'll do it uh, Tell me did he leave a note any sort of note or, or diary entry or, or memo mentioning me or suggesting that I or the company prompted this in any way? Good. Then I'm not legally obliged to care about it. Good day. Good day.